Okay, everybody, what we're going to do today is we're going to draw in two-point perspective. You'll need a ruler, a pencil, and, of course, an eraser. If you have an eraser already on your pencil, that makes it even easier. Now, with your ruler, the first step is you're going to create a horizon line. That is the point where the sky meets the ground, all right? Your horizon line is going to go across the center of your page. You can even label it horizon in your practices. You're then going to make two points, one on the left, one on the right. These are called vanishing points, all right? Your lines are going to go to your vanishing points, and they create the illusion of depth on the surface. To do this with two-point perspective, it's actually like we're looking at the corner of objects and we're seeing the sides vanish off to each point. So if I start by making a vertical line down below my horizon line, like so, and then I go from the top of that line and the bottom of that line and line up with both my vanishing points, I can start to create the illusion of a cube existing in three-dimensional space on the flat surface. So what we have now is the front corner of my cube and the sides going back, but they're going too far back. So what we need to do is, on either side, drop in a vertical line. Now make sure this is a truly vertical line that's going up and down. It should be parallel to this line in front. You don't want to have lines that are going on a funky angle like that or a funky angle like this, because they won't look right and they won't give you the cube-like shape. You want to make sure they're straight up and down. Then, from the tops of those two vertical lines you created, you can crisscross to the opposite vanishing points using your ruler, and you should be able to then see this cube-like structure right here. You see the two sides and the top. We can see the top because it is below the horizon line, therefore it is below our eye level. Once we've created that cube form, we can erase all of our extra converging lines. That's these lines that go to the vanishing point. They're called that because they converge on the vanishing point. You can also sometimes hear them called receding lines. Okay, so receding or converging. And we should have this nice cube in two-point perspective now. Now, depending on where we place our line, it affects what's happening with our cube. If we were to place our vertical line right on the horizon line, this is at our eye level. So we aren't going to be able to see the top of the cube or the bottom. We're really only going to see the two sides. So if I extend from that line to my two vanishing points, I create the sides of my cube. I then, just like before, I need to put these end caps on it in between those two lines I created, the two converging lines. So I can put one here, remembering to keep it vertical, straight up and down, and one over here. Now what happens is this becomes my cube. Because I can't see the top or the bottom, just the sides, I'm done. Now I can just erase my extra converging lines again. Now as you get more adept at this, you won't have to draw your converging lines all the way to the vanishing point. In the beginning though, it helps you to do that because it helps you make sure to line up with the actual dot. Uh, and I'll show you how you don't have to go all the way with this last one. Let's say I'm going above the horizon line. This is my cube floating up in the air. I start with my vertical line there. If I line up my ruler with my vanishing point all the way over here, I don't have to draw that line all the way and erase it. I can just draw it a little bit. Same with the point at the bottom of the line. As long as I'm making sure to line up with the vanishing point. Problem students have a lot of times here is they start making these lines, but they don't line up with that vanishing point. You have to line up the ruler with that vanishing point. Then I can obviously put in my vertical lines on both sides, wherever I see fit. Notice how I put in vertical lines. I didn't connect the ends of these lines because that wouldn't have worked. And then I can just crisscross them underneath. And I don't even have to draw those all the way as long as I'm lined up with my vanishing point. 
And you can see there how all of these lines, if I did extend them, would recede and converge on that vanishing point. But I didn't have to draw them all the way in. It saves me time on erasing. OK? So as long as you can remember to stay lined up with that point, you don't need to extend the lines all the way. Now, once I've drawn just a couple, you know, three of these things in here, I can go even further. I can sit here and say, hey, how about I stack a box on a box? Well, depending on where the box is, that's real, you know, easy to do. If I were to make a vertical line right out of this one, that's the corner of one of my boxes, right? Come over here, extend my lines out, lining up with my vanishing point. Other side, line it up. Make sure to line to your vanishing point. There's my converging sides. Pop a vertical line here and a vertical line here. Then, sorry, it's easy if I rotate this. I go that way and that way for my top. There's another box. It's sitting on the edge of this box. I can now erase. As I continue to do this, I can really create an environment with many of these forms existing in relation to each other, with boxes in front, behind, stacked up. Stack up another box here. I can just make a vertical line out, line up with my vanishing point there. My other one over here, sometimes it's easier if you rotate the paper instead of moving the ruler. I've created another box stacked on that one, right? I could do that up above. I, I could make a box below. I can do it anywhere I want. As long as I start with a vertical line and I line up my tops, and in this case, the bottom is already there. My top over here, in this case, the bottom would be covered, right? is extending down that way, and I pop in my vertical lines. Because what you have to imagine is, even though this box is being blocked, the base of that box is still underneath there, behind. Sometimes when you start doing things that are transparent or you put in windows and doors, you have to show that space behind. You could even start a whole new box down here in front if I wanted. making sure always to line up at the vanishing points. Now, sometimes it's really odd because when you get lower and further down or further off to the side of either vanishing point, it gets really skewed. Like this box is really stretched out and it doesn't look so much like a cube anymore like some of these other ones. But it is still an accurate perspective because it's in like the bottom right portion of your view. It is more skewed. So for your assignment, I want you to do 11 boxes, okay? Right now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's not that hard to get 11 in there. Once you have all 11 in there, I want you to pick a light source, and you're going to shade these boxes according to that light source. So if we look up here, if my light's coming down this way, all the boxes right sides are going to be kind of lit up because the light's going to hit those right sides, which means the left side is going to be in shadow. Also, if we think about how that light is existing in this space, my left side will be in shadow underneath. Is sunlight going to hit underneath on the bottom of this box? No. So that's going to be really, really dark and in shadow. I can keep thinking some of these boxes are a little further away, so their edges are going to be dark, fading to light, maybe even a little bit on the front end. This one's really far away, so this side's going to be dark, 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 fading to the light. You can also start thinking about everybody's favorite, the cast shadow. If my light's coming down and hitting this box this way, maybe it's got a shadow coming off of it like that. Over here, dark. Top of this box is going to be lit up because the sun is up above, but it might cast a shadow on the top of this box. 
And this box is going to be dark on the back side and cast its own shadow. You also, when you start shading these things in perspective, get into this whole problem where something above might cast a shadow on something below. This box is kind of above this one, right? The sun's hitting from this side, so this might have a bit of a shadow. It'd probably still be light, but not perfectly light, because something above is blocking it. Over here, this will be lit up. This will be in shadow. And my shadow radiates out, too. If you notice, these shadows work in the same perspective as the vanishing point, like they're extensions of the forms radiating out from the vanishing point. And there you have it, drawing in two-point perspective and shading your forms. For you guys, I need you to create 11, 11 boxes, and you need to shade them according to a light source. And that's your assignment you're going to be working on, all right?